Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Houdini Online Classroom brought to you by 3D Buzz. In this video, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about transformations. Now, Terry, mm -hmm. you've worked with 3D applications in the past. I have. Not really Houdini, but other applications. Right, right. When I say the word transformation or even transform, mm -hmm. what comes to mind? Uh, moving your objects within the scene. Moving my objects within the scene. Right. Okay. Is that just moving oh no 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 so you got move you have rotate and you have scale Excellent. that's the transformation for the so objects. for the students that are watching right now when i say the word transform i want you to think move rotate and scale but let's substitute move out for the word translate okay okay so that to translate it to rotate it and to scale it mm -hmm. and so that's what we're talking about in regards to transformations so let's go ahead and get started out with a piece of geometry I'm gonna hold control and click up here on box and that is going to give me a box at the center of the world now before we start positioning this object in the world let's spend just a second and reiterate the differences between objects mm -hmm. and geometry this okay. is very very important because you can transform both objects and geometry Right now, you see this box, it's just kind of sitting there, hanging out in the middle of the grid. You see it and you think, it's a piece of geometry. Well, you know, at its core, it is a piece of geometry. But we are currently at the scene level. We are inside the object folder, so we are working with objects. Very important to understand that. Now, when we transform this guy around, we are transforming an object around. And you can see with this geometry node, Select it. We're looking at a series of parameters up here in the parameter editor that deals with transformations to translate, to rotate, and to scale. But we have the ability to translate, rotate, and scale geometry itself, but that occurs inside the geometry node where modeling happens. You don't model out here at the scene level. Right. Okay. I mean, I have known some people to try to take a bunch of boxes and cubes and start putting together stuff, but that's that's not how you model in Houdini. You go inside one of these geometry nodes and that is the wonderful world of modeling okay. for Houdini. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna switch over to our tree view for just a second. So here we are looking at all of the default folders we get in a Houdini scene and we've talked about this in the past. Mm -hmm. Right now object folder we can see that we can expand it inside of it we have the box object one and that is currently the guy that we have selected box object one right and we can see that we can go inside box object one click and inside box object one we have one surface operator it's a generator it, it generates geometry that node is called box one it is a box that is actual geometry so if I select this actually before selecting watch this I'm gonna come back over here to the network editor mm-hmm where am I at? You're in your scene. I'm in the scene. Let's come back over here. Let's select box one. New. Notice a few changes. Right. All of the translate, rotate, and scale stuff up here went away. Some stuff changed over here. Mm -hmm. Let's come back over here to our network editor. Ah. Now, where are we? Jumped you into the geometry. Jumped us into the geometry level. We are now dealing with SOPs or surface operators. This is where we do our modeling. Okay. Now let's pretend, Terry, for just a second that we are modeling a car engine. Okay. And we want to have a complete engine represented as a single object. Mm -hmm. I mean, because obviously an engine, you know, you've got the carburetor, manifolds, you know, the right. block, etc. You've got a bunch of different pieces. Mm -hmm. But I want it in the end to be represented as a single object. That means I would come into a single geometry node, like in this case, it's named box object one, and do all of my modeling at the geometry level. Okay. So when I stepped back up to the object level, which I could simply click right here to go back to that level, or over here, I can just step back up. So here I'm back into the object level with the box selected, so mm -hmm. you can see scene there. But by creating or modeling the entire engine inside a single geometry node, what have I done? I've made it that made it such that at the scene level, I now have one node representing a complete engine. Okay. That I doesn't gotcha. mean that I can't animate pieces inside that engine. I can still animate inside the SOP level or the geometry level. Okay. Okay. But I want the engine to be represented by a single node. And that would be really cool to just, you know, have this called engine. Right. Maybe I could uh, create another geometry node mm -hmm. call it car okay and go inside that and model out the frame of a car or the body the whole body and then i can come back and position my completed engine into the body of the car and 
parent it up, which we'll talk about parenting in the very next video. I gotcha. Okay, so then as I drive my car around, the engine goes along with it, and it all looks right. Okay. But I didn't model the whole thing as mm -hmm. one piece of geometry. I modeled them separately. So I could do my tires separately, the mm -hmm. car body separately, and the engine separately, so that at the scene level, we're looking at multiple pieces of well, multiple objects, okay? I, I want to say multiple pieces of geometry because in any one of these geometry nodes, we can have multiple pieces of geometry. So when you come back out here to the scene level, then you'll be able to translate the entire object then. Yeah, here, if I, now let's, for, let's just stipulate for a moment that mm -hmm. I modeled a really cool engine, then I could come back out here to the scene level, and if I translate it around, everything's going. Okay. And that, and that may mean I, I modeled bolts, I modeled a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. But down at when you were in the geometry level, there wasn't any translates. There, right? there was translate, rotate, and scales. Exactly. And so let me go ahead and jump back down into that by double, double clicking. Right, because see, it all goes away. Yeah, so that's right. So it all went away. But there are a bunch of nodes that I can use. Ah, oh, okay, I okay. got you. And one of the nodes that I can use, I'm gonna create a node. I'm gonna hit the tab key on the keyboard, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna start typing out tran. Up oh, there's transform. Oh, hey. There so if go. I select the transform node, drop it down. And then tie the output of box one mm -hmm. to the input of X form one, transform one, and move my visibility down here. So I'm displaying this guy. Look at this. Translate, rotate, scale. So I can now translate my geometry around. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I move my geometry over, you can see I've updated yeah. this information right here. Let's go back up to the object level. Click. Look at this. The center of the world, its pivot point, is still at the center of the world. I have not changed its pivot point here. This is the pivot point for the object, I got not you. the various pieces of geometry that all come together to give you your completed model for this particular object. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. See, it's very important. So now if you had, let's say, uh, I don't know, you had two blocks side by side and you translated them on each different axis. Let's say, what was that one? A positive one or a negative one, I believe? A, 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 um, what? The, <laughs> excuse me, the box that you just translated within the geometry scene. Within the geometry scene. So I'll double click to go back right. in it. So that was a negative one. negative two. So if you had a second box that was positive one, that would be side by side, that would still, I mean, the uh, center of their pivot would still be in the Check this out. Just so that we, yes, just to help make things a little bit easier to understand, mm -hmm. I'm going to take this box. Right. I'm going to hit control C. Control V. So I've copied and pasted it. Mm -hmm. So now I have a second box. Where's this box located? Oh, it would be right at this. He's back at the center of the world. The only reason we saw this one over here move was uh -huh. because he was fed into oh, a transform. Gotcha. And I'm currently saying display the results of our network right mm -hmm. here. Check it out. That is why what we're seeing at the moment is a shaded box over here. We're seeing this guy all wireframed mm -hmm. because he was selected. I just deselected him. We're, we don't have visibility, so mm -hmm. the display flag's not turned on for this box, so we don't see him. So the result, if I was to go back up to the object level, is just this. But let's step back down, so I'll mm -hmm. double-click the box object. Now, let's take and create a merge. So again, I hit tab. I typed out part of merge. Hit enter. And the merge, I can say take the results of this guy, plug them in. Mm -hmm. Take the results of this guy plug them in, and display. Ah, there you go. Now, if I go back up to the object level, it's one object. Mm -hmm. That's my object. That's my model. Gotcha. And I did my modeling down inside here. Mm -hmm. So inside here, I can use this transform. With this transform, I can maybe say we're going to move him over a little bit. We're going to perhaps scale him up some, and we'll talk about all these hotkeys in just a minute. I could have even gone in here and start manipulating different points and all, which mm -hmm. we'll get into all that later. The point is modeling. We're working down here at the geometry level. I'm going to hit U on okay. the keyboard now to go up instead of clicking right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, So I'll hit U. Back at the scene level. Now we're looking at the whole thing as... As the scene. As, as you're going to say one object. As one object. Thank right. you. So now, check it out. I could take this one object, Control mm -hmm. C, Control V. Now I have two, and I can move this other object over oh, here. There you go. Cool. So if I had modeled some sort of intricate engine, mm -hmm. once I was done and had just this one little node Represents the whole engine. Or the Death Star. That's or yeah, there Loads you go. <laughs> of modeling. Control C, Control V, we now have another one. Very cool. So if I had modeled out a Star Wars TIE Fighter mm -hmm. inside one note, come back out, Control C, Control V, boom, I have another one. I can start pasting a whole bunch of them into the scene quickly. Nice. What you need to understand, this right here, mm -hmm. object. Inside object, 
the geometry that you're using to create your model. So all that makes sense. Oh, totally. I can see why it can get confusing, though. I mean, okay. it, it very easily get confusing because you want to move the boxes around. And if you realize... You've got to ask little... yourself, why do you want to move them? Are you moving it as because you're moving your model? Right. Or are you moving it because you're moving a part because you're modeling? You're building something. Right. Because now it's going to affect both of those boxes. In your Absolutely. So now if I move, it's not... Ah, so you just said it's going to affect both those boxes. Mm -hmm. No, these aren't two boxes. This is one piece oh, of geometry. There you go. Yeah. This is my object. Very cool. So it's no longer two boxes. Now, sure, it is if we dig back down mm -hmm. over here into the geometry levels by going into the geometry node itself. But makes sense. Yeah, totally. Very important because you need to know where you are when you are transforming an object. Are you transforming the object or are you transforming a part of the geometry because you're in the geometry level modeling? All right. So with that, let's just go ahead and grab both these guys real quick. Hit the delete key. I'm going to come back up here to my shelf, hold the control button down on the keyboard and left click on my box to give myself another box. All right. So now let's start talking about transformations. We can come up here inside our parameters editor mm -hmm. and simply start physically adjusting it by typing numbers in, which gives us a very precise control over the transformation of that geometry or of that object. Let me just say object. Now, right now, I know that by default, the size of this guy is a size of one. And you can see he's right dead center of the grid. Mm -hmm. So if I was to translate him up in Y, so mm -hmm. we've got Y coming up, Z is coming off this in this direction here, and X is coming off in this direction there. So if I was to come over here and type in 0.5, enter, he's now sitting on top of the grid. So you can see it's very easy to come over here, start typing in numbers to position an object where you want that object to be in the world. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes for rotation. I can come over here and simply rotate an X and Y and in Z. So if I wanted to, let's say, rotate it 45 degrees around Y, Type in 45 degrees, and he has now rotated 45 degrees around Y. If I needed him to go in the other direction, put a negative in front of it. Mm -hmm. and would then rotate in the other direction. Simple enough. So let's go ahead and zero that back out. Same thing applies for scale. You'll notice that our translate, our rotate, both start out with default values of zero. Right. Scale starts off with a default value of one mm -hmm. because scale is a, a multiplication thing. Because if I say scale it up to two, we want it to be two times the size. And now we have two times the size. Okay, mm -hmm. So very important to understand that you have to start out with a scale of one. Because if you start out with a scale of zero, like our translate and rotate, we're not going to see them. Right. You Anything you multiply nothing. by zero is zero. So if you say, give me something that is a scale of zero, well, guess what? You're not going to see it. Exactly. It's just an invisible point. So scale is one. So anytime that you revert your settings back, you're going to have translate and rotate zeros, and our scale is going to be one. And what do I mean by revert back? Well, let me go ahead and show you this. If I was to rotate this guy in that direction, maybe that direction, and scale him up to 1.5, there we go. So we've created this masterpiece. We're not modeling. This is so important to grasp. Okay, again, okay. beginners get this confused. Ooh, I'm modeling out this long piece that I'm going to use as a back for a chair. No, you're not. Right now, you are taking a model and scaling it. You want to model that back piece, you jump inside here and you do your modeling there. Now, if I want to revert these settings all back, I can simply come over here. I can right-click, excuse me, on the handle, and I can come, oops, it's almost off screen. Let's move it up just a little bit and right click anywhere on my handle, come down to revert to defaults and look at that. Oh. It's taken everything zeroed it out and let me go ahead and refresh my scene and you can see that beautiful. We also have the ability to come over here, right click and we can revert to defaults as well when something has been changed gotcha. from a default. So I just wanted to point that out because there are times that you may have manipulated the transformation of an object and then thought to yourself, yeah, I need to reset this. Or if like earlier we were saying you're in the wrong view. Yeah. You know, and, and that becomes whoa, even whoops, more <laughs> helpful later on when we start getting into character animation. Mm -hmm. And let's say there are certain things that you more or less freeze the transformation, meaning reset it at a new position. So if I was to say that the new 000 for this guy is somewhere over here, mm -hmm. right? And I've got something parented to him. So if I snap this guy back to 000, that piece parented to him goes back to the right position, right? Kind of okay. like a default state. 
um, then revert uh, to default becomes very useful when you've more or less frozen your transforms. And we'll talk about that kind of stuff a little bit later on. I just wanted you to see that right now you can just quickly come in here and on the handle, so anywhere on the handle, and oh, off screen just by a little bit. Let me go ahead and jump back up. I know working with a very small resolution. Revert to default, centered, end of story. Boom. All right. So we've seen that we can come over here and type in translate X, Y, and Z numbers. Mm -hmm. Same thing for rotate, same thing for scale. Now let's spend just a minute and talk about the different tools, the interactive tools that we can use. All right. So coming over here, first thing we got this select tool. So with this, I can just simply select objects. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. This is our translate tool. This gives us a translate handle. So if I click on this, there's a translate handle. You can see we have an X, a Y, and a, an X, a Y, and a Z. Mm -hmm. By clicking and dragging on one of these handles, we are constraining the object to move along that axis. So here we are moving along X, moving along Z, and moving up along Y. Mm -hmm. But wait! There's more. Ah. So let's go ahead and undo some of those real quick, move them back to the center. Look at this here in the center. The center handle, if we click on it and drag, we are going to move along the XZ plane. Okay. okay. So it's going to look like we're moving along the floor. So let me kind of back out a little bit. So you can see we're like 50% through once again. So moving along the floor. So I'm way back there. We're still 50% through. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Now, while moving along like this, let's say I need to change its elevation. I need to move it up or down. I can simply hold Alt while moving this around, and whoop, now I can control its elevation. Okay. The moment I let go of Alt, I am now moving it along, once again, the XZ plane, so parallel to our construction grid down mm -hmm. there, Okay, like such. Easy? Yeah, very cool. Now, keep this in mind, though. If we do not have our grid visible, that changes. And here's what I mean. Right now, if I was to move this up to the right-hand corner of the screen, I have pushed him way away off to the right, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's move him back close. Let's turn that off. Now, with the grid not being visible, our center handle is going to work differently. When I click and drag back to the back left, notice he's not getting smaller because he's not uh -huh. going further and further away. Right. He is now being moved perpendicular to the camera. Basically, he's being moved in our view space. I got you. Okay, so around the screen right here, it's as if the screen is now our grid. So I can't push him away. He's just moving perpendicular to the camera. Okay, mm -hmm. so turn this back on, and functionality changes, and back. Okay, Very cool. Now, so far, so good. But what if you would like to translate this object on two axes? So let's say I wanted to move him on X and Y, okay? How would we go about doing that? Well, we could simply right-click anywhere on the handle. From the menu that comes up, we could come up to Show Translate Plane. And from inside here, there we go, XY, XZ, YZ. Let's go ahead and select XY because that's what we said. Now, when I select this, let me point something out. Bing. It looks like nothing happened. Now, from my experience, I have found, depending on the video drivers that you have, mm -hmm. you may see your translate plane right now. You may not. Okay. We don't. What is the translate plane? Watch this. To see it quickly, I'm just going to tap my space bar, which will force a refresh. There it is. This is a plane indicating the two axes that I will be moving this object along. Since I selected X and Y, you can see that the plane here is perpendicular to Z, move, indicating that I'm moving along in X and Y. Let's watch our numbers up here. And let go. What changed? X and Y. Z did not change, so let's move it down. X and, once again, Y. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I want to change over to another two axes, uh, let's say, for instance, I wanted to do, let's say, Y and Z. Again, just simply right-click, come up here to show translate, come down to Y, Z, and up, oh, didn't change. What mm -hmm. do I do, Terry? You hit tap the space bar. Tap space bar. Bink, and, and then it changed. Very cool. So I'll come over here, Y, Z, and if I let go, watch over in our parameters editor, Y and Z change. Mm -hmm. So that's working fine. And to make our translate plane go away, I can once again right-click anywhere on the uh, translate handle, come back into the menu, and clear our translate plane. Again, tap space bar, and it goes away. Okay. But there's a hot key for this, and it is worth knowing, and that is the control key. Works just like Maya. All you need to do is simply subtract the axes you don't want to move on. So let's say I want to move on X, Z. 
Okay. So which one do I want to subtract? You want to subtract the Y. I want to subtract Y. So I'll press Control and click Y. Now, look at that. I don't have to hit spacebar using this technique. Now, in case any of our viewers out there try this and it doesn't show up, then hit your spacebar. But so far, all of the different computers that I've worked with, mm -hmm. this is this works just fine every time. Okay. So there it is. So now I am moving this object along in X, Z space or axes, mm -hmm. and you can see X and Z just update it. So it's real simple. I want to subtract X, Control, click X. We're now moving along Y, Z, mm -hmm. uh, su subtract out Z, and now we're moving along X, Y. And how do we get rid of it? Simple. Control, click again on the translate plane itself. And it goes away. Ah, gotcha. Pretty easy? Yeah. All right. That is how to work with the translate. Go ahead and move this guy up here. Right click. And it's off screen, but believe me, I'm doing a revert to defaults. All right. So let's go ahead and move over to rotation. So here is our rotate handles. Gives us three rings, and we get these three interesting balls, and we have a shaded area. All of this is of importance, of course. If we would like to take and rotate our geometry around a particular axis, we simply click on that ring and drag. So if I want to go around X, we can watch rotate X up here. I'll simply click. Let go and rotate X is what was just manipulated. So let me undo that. Around Y, simple enough, and around Z, easy. These balls allow us to rotate around the two rings that are intersecting in the ball. Oh, gotcha. So if I want to go around X and Z, click. Now watch this. So I can go in X, I can go in Z, but I can't turn it around Y. Okay, so there we go, too. It, it looks confusing. If, if you're not really thinking about it, it's like, wait a minute, isn't it rotating around everything? As a matter of fact, if I come in here and I do this and let go, all of the numbers just rotate it. Mm -hmm. And that's just because of the way rotations need to be calculated in order to give us this result. But we were just rotating around X and Z. Okay, so let's undo that. Now let's come over here and take a look at X. This is where it's going to become a little bit easier to see. So X and Y. So I'll click. Yeah, here I am going around X, right? Mm -hmm. All right, which way am I going around now? You're going around Y. Right. Now, how would I go around Z? I can't rotate it that way. So as you can see, if I wanted to do that, now let's go ahead and hit Control-Z and grab this guy. Ah, now I can there go around Z sense. and I can go around Y. Finally, the center grayed out area allows me to rotate around all three freely. Ooh. Okay, easy right. enough? Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to scale. So coming over here, here's our scale handle. Scale handle is unique. It allows us to uniform scale, non-uniform scale, and then scale along two axes. Let's start simple. How do we uniform scale? Well, any of these arrow tips out at the end will allow us, it doesn't matter which one you grab, any of them is a uniform scale. So watch our scale numbers over here. I'll mm -hmm. simply click, drag, let go, and all of them scale the exact same amount. Mm -hmm. ah, piece of cake. Click, drag in the other way, and we'll scale it back down. Whichever one is closest to your mouse, grab that one, do your thing. All right, so let's undo those two. Just put us back at a scale of one. Now, if I want it to scale along a single axis, all I need to do is grab, if you look carefully, let me hide this out and maybe switch over into wireframe by hitting W. You can see that my handle has these handle stems coming inside. Okay, right. so this one's red, this one's blue, and this one is green, indicating X, Y, and Z. If I was to click inside on that single line, this will allow us to scale in just that axis. I got you. So I could scale this guy down like such, maybe scale up in X and up in Z like such. Hit W again. Let's go ahead and switch back over to a shaded view. Pretty good? Mm -hmm. All right. So what happens if you want to scale in two axes? Like I've just created this tabletop here, and I want this tabletop to be larger but not thicker. Okay. Well, it's simple. You notice how we have these diamond-shaped rings that run around the scale handle or that mm -hmm. make up the scale handle. Simply click on the axis color that you do not want to scale. So since I want to scale this table up, but I don't want it to be any thicker. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just want it to be... Uh, more depth and, and width, okay? Right. So what would I do? I would grab Y, this Y ring right here, click. And just drag it. And drag it. And you'll notice we're not getting any thicker or mm -hmm. thinner, but the table is indeed getting larger. So far, it's yeah, good. Yeah, totally mean, makes sense. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to simply, uh, up once again, I'm going to right-click on the handle, come down to revert to, which is right off screen, and jump up to defaults, which you guys saw. All right, so... Nice, nice, and nice. Hot keys to get to them. The T key for translate, 
the R key for rotate, the E key for scale. We have one more handle to look at, and this handle is quite, well, handy. Okay. And that is our handle tool. It's this guy right here. The hot key for it is Y. Let's go ahead and click on it. Look at that. We have two different manipulators or handles visible at once. We have the ability to translate and rotate it. Very cool. But you may be thinking to yourself, well, that's nice, but what if I wanted to translate and scale it? The Y key acts as a cycle key. Uh -huh. I can cycle between three different handles here. So I have the handles are going to be rotate and translate, rotate and scale. Or, I'm sorry, rotate and translate, tr uh, scale and translate, mm -hmm. and just translate. So we're always going to have translate available. I got so you. here we are looking at the rotation version. I'll hit Y. Here we are looking at the scale version, and I'll hit Y again, and here we are just looking at translation. So if I was to hit Y again, we toggle back to the beginning. So let's hit Y once. Now I can, as I said a second ago, just to show, I can move them and scale them. Nice and easy. Yeah, okay? very cool. So that's the Y tool, tool, excuse me, just using what is known as the handle tool. So we've got our translate handle, our rotate handle, our scale handle, and this guy, our handle tool. Okay, so let me go ahead, come back up here, right click, revert to defaults once again. I always like in these demonstrations just starting out with a clean palette because there are some interesting scenarios that we can run into a little bit later on uh, that we'll get into. We'll start talking about dealing with gimbal, and when we start getting into parenting, uh, we'll start talking about some of the interesting scenarios you can get into when you have scales and rotations taking place in parenting hierarchies. But we'll get back to that later. So once again, just kind of clearing everything out. Next thing I want to do is go and turn our grid back on. Pivot point. Actually, we'll take pivot point in just a minute. Okay. I'll, and I'll introduce one more thing that I really wasn't going to throw into this video because this is really just an introduction to transformations, but it's so simple. Watch this. Let me grab my rotate tool. Let's take this guy, rotate him around Z so he's at an angle. Mm -hmm. If I was to hit T to grab my translate tool. Now, I am moving in the object's space, in object space. So the object has been rotated. Right. His world has been rotated. Mm -hmm. So to him, X in the object space is still in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And this is very convenient for us if we were to, well, let's say this was some sort of block that needed to position into something, some sort of socket just in this position. Mm -hmm. Well, it would stink if our handle here was matched up with the world and Y was pointing straight up and down to slide this into the socket. It would be challenging because you'd be working with both X and Y. Mm -hmm. But what if, let's say I move this up to right here, and now I want to translate him, how he is set up right now, straight back so that this edge down here, the corner of this box, is sitting on the center line right here. Right. Oh, uh, that's going to be challenging because what would I need to do? Move him down this way, and... move him up this way, move him back that Okay, yeah, this is going to be challenging. Move him down that way, back up. Still close. <laughs> no, we don't need to do that. All we need to do is right-click anywhere on the handle once again mm -hmm. and come up here to Align Handle. Ah, gotcha. So instead of aligning it to the object, we can simply align it to the world. Bink. Now I can set it right back where I wanted it just a second ago. Very cool. And at any time, of course, I can, even if I was to, in world space, hit uh, R and rotate this guy, I can still, let's rotate him where he's actually pointing downwards now. I can still right-click on the handle, come back to a line handle, switch back to object, and you'll notice, once the viewport updates, there we go, that if I was to grab my translate tool, that it still follows just right. So we have another one to look at. Let's right click, come back up here to align handle, view. And view is basically gonna give us what we saw earlier when we were using the center box and we had turned off the grid. Mm -hmm. We are basically moving this guy around perpendicular to our lens. So you can say in our view space, okay, or screen space, depending on what app you may have come from in the past. This is pretty cool. With this guy right here, this allows us to move the object towards us or away from us. So if I click, I'm moving him towards us by dragging off to the right. Oh, so that's not scaling up at all. And nope, so look at that. Uh -huh. Ah, gotcha. he's right in our face. Now let's position him back. If I go the other direction, so now I'm dragging to the left, and let's give a little bit more, a little bit more. All right, scales didn't change at all. Let's rotate now. Ah, oh, he's further uh, away. Gotcha. Okay, so just wanted to point that guy out real quick. So let's go ahead and right click on the handle. I always right click just anywhere but to begin with. Parent, we'll get to parenting a little bit later when we start talking about parenting, but this allows us to basically shift our transform tools so that we are moving in parent space. 
Let's go ahead and jump back over here to object real quick. I'm going to right click on my handle and jump down to revert to and we'll go back over to defaults real quick. Next thing I want to show real fast is just the pivot point. So right now when I go to rotate, so I'll hit R, I'm rotating around the center because right now its pivot point for this object is located in the center. So how would we go about changing the pivot point? Well, it's actually quite simple. I can go into pivot mode by right clicking and coming in here to pivot mode. And now I can move the pivot. We can right click, come out of pivot mode. And now you can see that I'm rotating ah, gotcha. from over here. Another and more simpler way to do this is the old Maya approach that Houdini now provides for those that may be coming over from that application, and that is the insert key. So I just hit insert on my keyboard and move nope. this guy over, and all is ready to go, okay, like such. So now I can come over here, take, translate, move, and all that good stuff, and everything's perfect. Now what happens if I want to recenter this up? I can simply come up here, recenter the pivot that is on my geometry. I can come up here to the modify shelf, and from the modify shelf, I can simply hit center pivot, and that is going to center up my pivot. Very cool. Another thing that I'd like to point out real quick, and I know this is really kind of goes above and beyond introduction to transformations, but when working with pivots, there are times that you may want to temporarily move your pivot point. Mm -hmm. This is very handy. Uh, to do this, all you need to do is hit the key on your keyboard right next to your enter key. It is the single quote. If I hit single quote, I can now move this guy over. Hit single quote again, and now I'm transforming from that spot. But watch this. This is temporary, mm -hmm. and it only deals with the current transform tool. So since I am using, at the moment, translate, if I jump over to rotate, so if I hit R, look at that, we're back center. If I hit translate again, we're back center because okay. it was only temporary. So let's say I wanted to rotate because... Moving the pivot for the translation really wasn't a meaningful thing. So here we are with the rotation tool. Now I'll simply hit the single quote and then move this guy over like such. Hit the single quote again. Now I can do my rotation. Now if I was to leave that tool, so we'll hit uh, T, go over to translate, hit R again to go back to rotation. Ah, gotcha. It's back centered. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, all of the transformations that we have been talking about so far, as I had strongly pointed out at the very beginning of this video, are at the object level, the scene level. We are moving our models around the scene. This is our virtual stage, our virtual world in which we are positioning the models. Mm -hmm. Okay, We're not talking about transforming the geometry, the pieces, the elements, the components down at the geometry level. To do those... I'll double click to jump in. We saw that we needed to add a transform node and then we get those transform type capabilities. Tab and transforms at the bottom uh, because it was a recently used one. If I get this guy up high enough, uh, I can just uh, right click right here on my output, come down here to transform. He is down there, right Terry? Yep, you that's saw. All. I can add the transform. Now I can come over here and use my tools and start manipulating, okay? Mm -hmm. So piece of cake, yeah. no trouble. Let's go ahead and jump back up. And I think that's everything that I wanted to discuss at the moment uh, dealing with transformations. So with that, no questions? No. I think that's uh, pretty straightforward and clear. I can't think of anything to ask. We shall it. find out soon. Yes. You will have assignments <laughs> soon. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for joining in. And that is going to conclude this video.